Uh, Islam in China uh, has not been studied very much. Uh, and generally, when I was in graduate school and, and starting out, there would be many conferences and interest in religion in China. But Islam was never concluded. Uh, now that's changed. Uh, I, don't, I can't claim any credit for that. Uh, but I can note that the world has changed since I started studying Islam, uh, religion in China and Islam in China. And so there's a great deal of interest on the fact that there are Muslims in China, how did they get there, things like that. I'm going to go very quickly. Uh, most of these slides are on our website, and also my email is here if I go too quickly. Um, and if, uh, if you have questions, then hopefully we'll have time. If not, uh, I'll be here for the conference and uh, follow up. Um, my thinking is that if uh, we can uh, dim the lights a little bit, I can go through uh, some of these slides a little better. I'll, I'll come up here a little more so I can get a little closer to you. Um, I brought the rain, I think, from California, but I hope I didn't bring anything else. <laughs> Since I don't eat pork, I don't think I brought my coach, but uh, we haven't established that connection yet. Uh, but basically, I really want to talk about the Olympics again, because it's something we've all forgotten about. And it was a very big deal last fall and summer, uh, and there's been so much that's happened. But I think in some ways it's good to revisit some of those issues and images because it really shook our view of China and the way we see China today, uh, particularly in terms of global matters, and particularly in terms of the notion in China of one world and many dreams. Uh, this this uh, one world, one dream was the slogan of China's Olympics, and now I think we've seen that with uh, some of the crises facing the world, there have been many responses to it, particularly the economic crisis, crisis and the uh, swine flu crisis. I want to look at the issue of the Muslims during the Olympics and some of the things that happened at that time and then since that time with their place in Chinese society and in context of this conference's interest in religion. And also look at the issue of identity or I, what the phrase I've been, the word I've been using more often as identifications. How Muslims are identified in China and how other religious groups are identified, and the role of the state, uh, and some conclusions and implications. Now, I think that um, what we've been seeing lately is a focus on the economy, just prior to the swine flu crisis. And one of the points that I'll come back to is that Muslims as a minority and as a marginalized minority uh, will be definitely affected by this crisis. And we all know around the world that the more marginalized you are, the more particularly in China, in the uh, state uh, employment sector, but also especially in the private sector. Uh, and uh, Muslims have been a big participant in that. Um, this was the slogan of the Olympics, if you haven't, if you haven't forgotten. Uh, and it was an important coming together. Uh, China established itself on the world stage. I think everyone would agree it was a tremendously success successful Olympics. There were some minor disturbances that I'll talk about. But overall, uh, China really demonstrated its ability to compete and win on the world stage, not just on the playing field, but in terms of a world-class city, a world-class event. And it's something that I think all Chinese everywhere are very proud of, and I think they have a right to. Uh, but that notion of one world and one dream was somewhat shattered by other images uh, that kept coming into especially the Western media, not so much the Chinese media. Uh, but also the events out in Western China, the region of Xinjiang, as well as most publicly in the West, uh, the protests around Tibet. Uh, something that would not go away. Uh, China tried very hard to, uh, to sort of avoid this uh, image, uh, but it kept coming back. And so I want to talk about some of these issues that, that the Olympics, we sort of were diverted from slightly, but not completely. And this is one issue that was mentioned prior to the Olympics that was becoming more important, uh, but it's the issue of the Guantanamo Bay Uyghurs. Uh, and it's probably the one group, Muslim group in China that you'll hear most about uh, in the media, um, especially recently. Uh, there's been quite a bit in the media. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, there was a front page article in the New York Times. There was an online discussion. And basically, the, the, uh, the, the dilemma for the new Obama administration is what to do with these people. Uh, as we know, uh, five of them were sent to Albania. Uh, there's a new frontline documentary. I'll show maybe a clip of that if we have time. Uh, and some of the guys, a few clips I'd like to show if we have time. 
I might have to skip over that, but I can get them to be interested. Uh, but I think this is an issue that will continue to not just plague China, but plague the world. Because the United States is very involved, of course, and also other countries. Uh, the U.S. has now uh, admitted they've approached over 100 countries to take these men. Uh, they were all classified as non-combatants. Uh, they were about to be released. All seven, 17 that were remaining there were brought to the United States. They were put on trial in D.C. And then the Justice Department of the Bush administration intervened and sent them back to Cuba. This was last fall. And so these men are still there. All but the five went to Albania. Uh, one of the Albanian Uyghurs has now gone to Sweden. Uh, but for the most part, this is a dilemma that will continue to come back in the media. It's an image, like these images in the Olympics, that China cannot avoid and that the U.S. also has to address. Most people think that this will be the first group, large group of Muslims from Guantanamo that will be released into the United States. So this will be an issue that continues to come back to us. Um, China welcomed the world, not just to Beijing, uh, but to China, uh, to observe the Olympics. This is a, a billboard on the way into Beijing. Uh, and it's this image of a multi-ethnic China uh, that uh, is welcoming the world that all of us enjoy together last summer.